Hello, in this lecture, we're going to discuss evaluating limits analytically. And we're going to do several examples so that you can learn how to actually evaluate limits. So there is a general rule that you can use when evaluating limits. And this is not a rule that you typically see uh, written in books, but it's a rule that works and you just have to pay special attention to the wording. So the rule says if you can plug in the number. So if you can plug in the number when you're taking a limit and you get an actual answer, go ahead and do it. So if you can plug in the number and you get an answer, go for it. Now, by an answer, I mean something that actually makes sense, right? So you actually need to get a number. So if you get division by zero or something nonsensical, that's not going to work. You actually have to get uh, a real number. Uh, if it doesn't work, then you try something else. So if it doesn't work, so if it does not work, try something else. Try something else and that's really what it's all about it's what is that something else so in this lecture we're going to investigate different techniques that you can use for evaluating limits and we're just going to do a bunch of examples because i think that's the best way um, to learn calculus so let's just start with an example here and i'll just start by making one up say we have the limit as x approaches uh, the number one of parentheses, let's say 3x squared plus 4. So we're trying to find the limit of 3x squared plus 4 as x approaches 1. So our rule says if we can plug in the number, in this case the 1, into this uh, polynomial and we get an answer, go for it. Well, there's nothing here that says we can't plug in the number, right? We can certainly put the 1 here. Now, when you plug in the number, you're evaluating the limit, and that's when you drop the limit sign. We get three times one squared plus four. And so one squared is one, so this is three times one, which is just three, plus four, and it's equal to seven. Look at that, super easy. We're doing calculus, right? So it's really not that bad. So if you can plug in the number and you get an answer, go for it, that's the answer. You got this. Let's do another one. Let's just keep doing examples here. All right. Now I'm going to find one here that looks decent. I have a list of problems here. Um, how about uh, all of these are too easy. We need something harder. Uh, here we go. Here's a, here's a harder one. Limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 3x over x. It's still pretty easy. If you already know calculus, this is going to seem really easy. but there's a point to be made here. You see, if I plug in zero here, look what's gonna happen. Um, I drop the limit sign, and I get zero squared plus three times zero over zero. So you end up with zero over zero. That's no good, right? You cannot divide by zero, it's an epic fail. So what do you do? You have to do something else. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to factor. So this is the limit. And notice I'm writing the limit sign again. It's really, really important to always write that limit sign um, until you actually evaluate the limit. So in the numerator, we have x squared plus 3x. So you can actually pull out the x here. And let's see, what times x is going to give you x squared? Well, x, right? Because x times x is x squared. And then what times x is going to give you uh, 3x? So plus 3 all divided by x. And this is where the magic happens, right? The x's cancel. Boom. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 3. Very nice. And now we're in a place where we can actually plug in the limit. We can actually evaluate the limit. So this is where you drop the limit sign, you replace the x with a 0, and so we end up with the number 3. It's very, very important to structure your work. I want to emphasize that uh, one of the things that I've seen that people have a hard time with sometimes is 
they don't have the proper notation, it's really, really important to have correct notation. So write the limit sign, write the limit sign, write the limit sign. Don't write it because you plug it in. So here the technique we used was factoring. So factoring is a technique that is often used when evaluating limits analytically. So something to keep in mind when you're working on random problems, you know, if you're taking a test or you're just doing random problems from a book, uh, something worth doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and scratch this one out because we've completed this problem. I like to scratch problems out as I do them. And let's go to uh, another one. This one looks much more challenging. Um, let's work up to that one though. Let's do a little <laughs> one that's a little bit easier next. Uh, X approaches negative one of X squared minus one over X plus one. After this one, we'll do one that's a little bit more challenging. Um, again, if you plug in negative one, uh, you would get negative one squared minus one over negative one plus one. So negative one squared is one, so we get one minus one. Negative one plus one is zero, so you get zero over zero and everything falls apart. So again, does not work. So we need to do something else. And of course, that something else is going to be factoring. Recall the formula, a squared minus b squared, that's equal to parentheses, let's do a plus b times a minus b. I say let's do, because you can write the a minus b first, but I decided to write the a plus b first. You can, you know, multiplication is commutative. Some people memorize it as, as a minus b, a plus b. Some people memorize it as a plus b, a minus b. Okay, so since we're gonna apply this formula, we're thinking of the numerator here as x squared minus one squared. So a is your x and b is your one. So this is the limit. Notice again, I'm writing the limit sign as x approaches negative one and it'll be a plus b, so it'll be x plus one times x minus one, all divided by x plus one, really good stuff. And again, notice um, that I've written the limit sign, so super, super key to write that limit sign. Then boom, look at this, the magic happens. You get some beautiful cancellation, so this is the limit. As x approaches negative one, I really like this green, it's a really nice color. It's really like bright and yeah, anyways, X minus one. <laughs> All right, we're in a good place. We can plug in the number. So we drop the limit sign, plug in that negative one. So we get negative one minus one. So we get negative two. And now we're really doing calculus, right? So we've done, we've done three examples so far. Let's just recap what we've done. You know, the first example was a really easy one using our golden rule. If you can plug in the number and you get an answer, go for it. If it does not work, try something else. So we plugged in one, we got an answer. Easy, right? Just make sure you drop the limit sign when you plug in the number, that is so important. And these two examples, we used a similar technique. So factoring, so same technique in both examples. In the first example, we factored out a greatest common factor from the numerator, so just the x. And then we got to a point where we were able to plug in the zero, we did that, then we dropped the limit sign. In the second example, uh, it was still pretty easy, uh, although slightly more sophisticated. We had to use the difference of squares formula. Let's do another one. And in this example, um, things are going to be a little bit more interesting. Let's switch colors. Let's go to like a, a blue here. Oh, let me scratch out the problem because I have a list of problems. And so uh, which one did we do? All right, so I scratched that one out. Let's try, let's try this one. Uh, looks a little bit more interesting. Let's take the limit. As x approaches, um, uh, let's do this one, two, of x cubed minus eight over x minus two. So this one can be very challenging because, well, you'll see. <laughs> so again, first rule is you plug in the number. So we get two cubed minus eight over two minus two. Well, two cubed is eight, so you get eight minus eight over two minus two. So you get zero over zero and the world ends. Uh, hopefully not, but it doesn't work, right? So we have to do something else. So that something else is of course factor and we have the difference of cubes formula. So a cubed minus b cubed. Actually, I'm gonna show you both. I know it's not really important for this problem, but let me show you how I memorize these formulas because I think, I think it's gonna help you. So the way I memorize the difference of cube formula is it's the same sign, 
So it's a minus b, then it's always a squared, and then you switch the sign, okay? So it's plus b squared, plus a, plus a b, plus b squared. So switch the sign. So keep the sign, switch the sign. Keep the sign, switch the sign. A common mistake maybe is you might think it's plus 2ab. That's another formula um, for something that's called um, a perfect square trinomial. Uh, but here it doesn't have the 2. And then for this one, for the sum of cubes, you keep the sign. And then you switch the sign. Okay, so... So keep the sign, switch the sign. I think I might have misspoke. This is the difference of cubes, and this is the sum of cubes, okay? So this formula here is the difference of cubes formula, and this one is the sum of cubes formula. So in this particular problem, we have x cubed minus 8. So we have the limit as x approaches 2, and our a here is x, and 8, we can think of that as 2 cubed. So we're using this first formula here. So it'll be x minus two, that's the a minus b. And then a squared is x squared. And then plus a b, so that'll be plus two x. So plus two x. And then plus two squared, so plus four. All of this, all of it, every little bit is divided by x minus two. So very useful to memorize these formulas. Hopefully this has helped you a little bit. Keep the sign, switch the sign, keep the sign, switch the sign. And it's always a plus at the end. Notice the similarities in the formulas. So here a was x, b was 2. So we did a minus b, x minus 2. a squared is x squared plus ab, that's 2x, check, plus b squared, check. Boom, goes away. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 2. And then here we have parentheses x squared plus 2x plus 4. Okay, very good. And at this point we can plug in the 2. <laughs> so all is good. So this will be, uh, let's see, 2 squared plus 2 times 2. This is where I usually mess up, <laughs> adding up the numbers. Oh, yeah, so funny. Uh, so many mistakes here. Plus 4, a 4, plus 4, plus 4. So we get the answer of 12. And so that would be the answer. And as always, I'm going to scratch out the problem I just did so I don't do it again. Right, so that's another example of factoring, right? Another example of factoring. All kinds of ways to find limits.